Ok. Uh -huh. Doctora Ana María, ¿estás ahí? Hello. Hello, Dr. Ana Maria is, is uh, trying to connect to the room. So this, uh, this session, this is a multidisciplinary session uh, where we'll be presented three papers uh, who has not the opportunity to be presented in, in the two days, uh, uh, previous two days of the conference. So the first, The first paper will be presented by Dr. Ana Maria Martinez, uh, who, who will present the, 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 the paper uh, Supervised Neural Network for Forgery Detection of, of Offline Handwritten Signatures, who was co-author and, and, and the preliminary presenter was Mohamed Aslam and also uh, Dr. Ana Maria uh, Martinez Enriquez and Salim Sumra. So, uh, Doctora Ana María, you can share your your screen and to present. Okay. Thank you. We don't hear you, doctora. Hello, Dr. Ana Maria. Okay.
maybe it will be convenient to, to give the place to Dr. Ramakrishna and maybe yeah, the Dr. Ana Maria could pass after after he him yeah, it's possible. presentation. But we have enough time uh, in this room to 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 wait. Okay. To nine twenty. Doctor Ana Maria, are you ready? Or we can wait uh, after the first uh, presentation by Doctor Rama Krishna. We have here in this session also the Dr. Muhammad Aslam. I don't know if who, okay. if he could share a present uh, too. I, I don't know. Dr. Muhammad Aslam, are you there? Because we, we don't have connection with Dr. Ana Maria Martinez. Dr. Ana Maria have a problem with the microphone. Yeah, and, okay. And she is uh, trying to to change it. I don't know if she is if we begin with Dr. Ramish Ramakrishna. We will wait to 9:20, included uh, to continue with the schedule, and after that uh, we have enough time to 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 switch to the okay. presentation of Professor Ana Maria. Okay. So, because we are almost close to 
Okay, we can continue. Um, so we will start this uh, session because of the technical problems. We will start with with uh, the the paper uh, by Professor by, um, with the paper um, ID one twenty two uh, by Professor Ramakrishna. Uh, entitled Reduction of Energy Consumption in NOC Through the Application of Novel Encoding Techniques. So please, Professor Ramakrishna, can you switch your screen? Yes. And start. Is uh, my okay. screen switch? Okay, sir, slide. Slides are visible, sir? Yes, we can see your yes. presentation. OK, go ahead. Yeah, good morning. I'm Dr. Ramakrishna B, working as a student professor in the Department of ECE, School of Engineering and Technology, Sri Padmavati Mahila Vishwadhyalam, Sri Padmavati Women's University, India. And uh, the title of uh, research work is Reduction of Energy Consumption in Network Concept Through the Application of uh, Novel Encoding Techniques. Uh, abstract, uh, if you come to this abstract, with the advancement of uh, technology, the power consumed by network on chip connections, particularly uh, routers, network interfaces comes into the picture uh, to compete with the um, power consumed by other network communication subsystems. And this work actually uh, provides a set of data coding techniques for reducing this uh, network on chip connection power consumption. And um, the proposed techniques are generic and transparent in terms of uh, uh, NBC fabric, uh, with no changes to the routers and um, the connection design. And uh, from the results, the simulation results uh, can be observed that suggested method, proposed methods can save more than 50% of uh, power dissipation and uh, less than 50% of reduction and energy consumption. And uh, 
The proposed schemes have been implemented on the Xilinx FPGA, Spartan 6 family. That is the tool which we have used uh, and uh, we have written in the code via VHCL. And the tool uh, used is Xilinx. To come to this introduction part, uh, shifting from a silicon technology node to the next technology generally results in a faster and uh, more power efficient gauge, but uh, slower and more power hanging wise. But uh, that, that complete, uh, um, if, you, if we uh, come to the dynamic power dissipation, uh, more than 50% of uh, this dynamic uh, power will be dissipated in interconnects in uh, the current process. But uh, what uh, here we are proposing a solution for that because uh, it now it is 50% of dynamic power is uh, wasted. Uh, that may go uh, to 65 to 80% over the next several years. That's why here uh, we are try proposing the staff data encoding methods, uh, which generally functions at the free time end to end levels, uh, which allows uh, to reduce switching activity and uh, coupling activity so that we can uh, save uh, the power. And if you come to this network on chip, uh, the introduction part here, the diagram which shows the construction of ARM and uh, AMBA bus structure, the majority of uh, sophisticated bus architectures generally uh, employs the hierarchical structure to provide a, uh, a scalable uh, uh, design and uh, also uh, this uh, bus-based design uh, has a basic bandwidth rest restriction. Uh, the drawback of uh, using this uh, because of uh, this lengthy wires and all. And uh, this network on chip architecture generally used to avoid that large cable delay. And uh, in terms of uh, if we uh, talk about the system performance, MOC provides a number of benefits over conventional bus structures. So that's why uh, here we are uh, mainly worked on this NOC. Uh, rather than on working on the bus structure. And we see um, basically consists uh, processing element on network interface NI, the routers. Here, uh, this diagram. And we see architecture diagram, which generally consists of processing elements, uh, network interfaces, uh, routers, corner routers are there, edge routers are there. Data generally sent from the processing element to the network interfaces, which bundles it into flitch the you know, unit uh, control for units and transmit to the routers. Here, router uh, generally includes uh, the transmission channel, routing computation, virtual channel arbiter, switch arbiter, uh, class bar, etc. Et and the flitter, which is flitch, which is, which are coming from uh, network interfaces uh, to this router, uh, this flits includes a header, body, and tail. Uh, generally, header flit uh, have a um, crossing element priority, source address, destination address, uh, uh, so forth. And uh, here, the arbiter will uh, generally work as soon as the item arrives. The, as soon as the flit arrives, uh, then immediately this arbiter will begin working. And the switch arbiter process begins when the flit arrives. The router will then unregister the transmission channel after the last flit, which is generally known as the tile flit. And uh, proposed scheme, when uh, come to this uh, proposed scheme, our um, this, um, main basic idea of the proposed approach is uh, encoding the flits before they are injected into the network because a lot of uh, power is wasted um, uh, during uh, this uh, transmission of uh, or uh, transmitting this data uh, or sending the data from the network uh, this processing element uh, to the rotor so the goal is to minimize the self switching activity and the coupling activity in the link traversed by the flits so that is our the main uh, goal and uh, here, uh, this work actually describes the designing of encoder and decoder, which uh, use this at a network interface, will, which reduces the link power dissipation. And here we are proposing two schemes. Uh, for both the schemes, encoder and decoder will be the same. And um, the designing of encoder and decoder, uh, the, which uh, the design will be, uh, which leads to the reduction of the link power dissipation. 
the equation which uh, shown here that it's a dynamic power dissipated by the interconnection drivers uh, p equal to t0 to 1 transition 0 to 1 uh, transitions in the bus in two consecutive transmissions uh, cs is the line to substrate capacitance cl is load capacitance tc is the number of uh, correlator switching between physically adjacent lines and uh, VDD is the supply voltage, uh, clock frequency is FC. Now, here, uh, if we see uh, the encoder architecture, uh, the input uh, here, this is the encoder scheme. Uh, the input data to the uh, encoder block is of uh, W bits, in which W and W minus one bits are input data to the encoder and one bit inversion bit. And if inversion bit is uh, one, the input data is either odd inverted or even inverted or even inverted depending on the encoding scheme also. If inversion bit is zero here, then the input data is sent to output without inversion. Without any inversion, that will be sent if it is zero. If it is one, then that is the inversion bit. And here, this is the encoder scheme. Uh, and coming to the decoder, here, this decoder architecture generally consists of two main blocks, um, decoder block and storage element. The input, again, the input to this decoder block is of W bits, in which W minus one bits are output data from the encoder, and one bit is the inversion bit. And if inversion bit is one here, the data is at the input of the decoder block, generally it may be either odd inverter or even inverter, depending on the decoding scheme which we are using. So which type of scheme we are using based on that, this uh, will also change. So here uh, two schemes are there. Scheme one, which reduces the number of type one transitions and type two transitions. Type one transitions, uh, when the line goes uh, uh, from one stage to another stage, from high to low or low to high. The type two transitions are, uh, uh, two changes will be done, low to high, high to low. That, uh, what will happen? The, the, those uh, those type one transitions, type two transitions are reduced in the scheme one. And uh, the scheme one, you know, use uh, the com it compares the current data with the previous one to decide whether odd inversion or no inversion of the current data can lead to the link power reduction. And uh, when come to this scheme two, in this scheme we have uh, used uh, uh, both odd and uh, full inversion. Full inversion operation converts type two transitions to type four transitions. Complete uh, inversion operation, full inversion means uh, every uh, thing, not even odd, uh, complete full inversion or will takes place. And this scheme compares current data with the previous one to decide whether odd, full or no inversion of the current data can give rise to the link power reduction. Here, uh, and about the uh, schemes uh, or uh, the encoder and decoder, the scheme one, scheme two, here this is the same sequence of fleets passes through all the links of the routing path. The encoding decision taken with the network interface may provide the same uh, power saving for all the links. For the proposed scheme, uh, what uh, this uh, scheme, encoder and decoder block are added to the network interface and uh, uh, this uh, fleet encoder generally encodes out coding fleets of the packet so that the power dissipated by the router point to point link is uh, minimized. And uh, these are the results. Uh, the, we have written this in VHL and uh, implemented in Xilinx uh, Spartan 6 family. And we have written, and this is the RTL schematic. and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this is the internal view of that schematic. This is a scheme one when reset equal to zero, but not inverted. And this is a scheme one result when reset is, is zero, but at a inverted point for scheme one. And here uh, data out is uh, generally um, is based on the clock reset. And uh, in this uh, data out is uh, generally based on the clock reset and also on the data input. Depending on the amount of power consumed by data encoding, data is either, either odd inverter or not inverter. And uh, if uh, given clock at positive edge and uh, reset equal to one, uh, that is in the next scheme, 
uh, this is scheme two. This is the RTL schematic, and this is the internal view, which uh, is given by the Xilinx two. And uh, these are the simulation results. Uh, when reset equal to uh, one here, this uh, scheme two uh, it shows it, uh, mainly it depends on the clock reset and data input. Um, generally, data out will be generated based on that. The data in either odd inverted or full inverted or sometimes not inverted. And uh, here, uh, if a given uh, clock is uh, positive, yeah, in this, if a given clock is positive at and uh, reset equal to zero, then uh, depending on the value of the data input, the data out will be either odd or uh, it will be even inverted or sometimes not inverted simply uh, as it is. So the inversion is based on the power calculation with the inversion of uh, the data as uh, shown. And uh, coming to the conclusion, this work mainly suggests to minimize the power wasted by uh, network on chip. Uh, two methods or two schemes are uh, proposed. When compared with the earlier uh, early encoder schemes, the proposed scheme uh, uh, minimizes not only the changes but also the coupling activity and uh, an in-depth study of the encoders distribution studied in the silicon area using the techniques given and um, the suggested encoding approaches uh, generally is uh, given and uh, savings of up to uh, this 50 percent power distribution 14 percent of uh, uh, this ni network interface energy use and uh, without sacrificing any kind of uh, any uh, this uh, performance any kind, without sacrificing any kind of uh, performance uh, we have achieved uh, this uh, saving of uh, power and these are the references thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity okay thank you professor um so we have now time for questions. Uh, is there any question from the attendance? I, I have one question, Professor Ramakrishna. Um, sure. uh, because you're trying to uh, optimize uh, the, the technique are you comparing with other different techniques? Because uh, if you are trying to reduce uh, or optimize uh, only the power consumption, but uh, how is uh, how is affected the 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 how do you say the efficiency of the network? Yeah, without uh, changing the design or uh, the router or. We are trying to uh, reduce the power consumption uh, of uh, when we are uh, sending the data from the network interface to the uh, router in the links, transmission links. That is what we are doing. And the efficiency will be good because uh, here we are, our main aim is to reduce the power consumption. And how? Uh, uh, the efficiency is also uh, uh, good when we compared with the previous um, uh, published literature. That is, uh, okay, mm -hmm. so the efficiency is not is not is not really affected, but you are improving uh, almost in fifty percent the the energy consumption. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. And and what about the the technology? Is it simpler with this technology? Sorry, I mean the implementation is easier, or 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 that uh, uh, means more uh, expensive uh, cost of implementation. Implementation uh, cost. I mean in that in, in trying to to reduce the the energy consumption uh, by some uh, technology with some uh, um, uh, programs and and equipments. Uh, how, how how is the the the, the cost uh, of that uh, optimization? Cost of the optimization uh, it will be uh, moderate and not uh, uh, 
uh, I cannot say that uh, it's a low, but uh, uh, before uh, going to this, uh, we have uh, written the code and simulated, and uh, when we observe, uh, it is uh, take it will take some moderate uh, uh, the cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any other question, please? I have one question for okay. Dr. Ramakrishna. Okay. Yes. Hello, yes. Dr. Ramakrishna. Thank you for your presentation. Um, yes. If these results uh, was in the implementation in one simulation, the efficiency, the results of the uh, re reduction in the power consumption of the 50% can be affected in a and uh, real world practical implementation. In the real uh, world, uh, actually, it's uh, simulation results. When we come to the real world, uh, it may be uh, not that much of 50%. It may be slightly reduced when we use uh, this uh, real traffic. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, any other question, please? You can raise your hand and open your microphone. Or also, you can write your questions um, in the chat. Not, and if not, we will. We want to to thank you, Professor Ramakrishna, for your presentation, and um, so thank, thank you very much for your presentation, and thank, thank you, you for to, to, for your compromise to to present your paper. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay. you. For thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now we we can continue with the next presentation. So the next presentation will be given by um, uh, let me see. The next presentation will be given by Salim Sumra with the paper supervised neural network for forgery detection of offline handwritten signature. So you can switch uh, your screen. So now we're ready to, to switch your presentation. OK. Samuel, can you give the privilege to Sumra Salim? Excuse me, uh, it's here, uh, Muhammad uh, from Pakistan. OK. okay. Uh, we, uh, we have a little problem uh, in, uh, in connecting our system. Can you? Uh, Please give us uh, uh, a little 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we will okay. present after. OK, sure. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. OK, OK, thank you. Excuse me, uh, you can start with the, the other presentation. Uh, then after uh, I will present from my side. OK. Mm -hmm. So we have in the program the, the last paper, but uh, I don't know, Samuel, if uh, Giovanni Palomino is, is ready to present. Um, uh, I don't see in this session to Giovanni Palomino Roldan or neither Ernesto Suaste Gomez. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to call him, but uh, neither of them are here yet. OK.
So, uh, so uh, Doctor, I am I am going to present this uh, the paper of uh, Samra Salim. Samad, okay. Yeah. You can switch. You you can share your screen, and start. Okay. Okay. Thank you very okay. much, Professor Muhammad Aslam. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, can you screen? Uh, can you uh, see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. You can see your screen. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And and uh, I am extremely sorry uh, for the inconvenience that uh, we have uh, with the problems. Uh, I am I am uh, Dr. Muhammad Aslam, uh, currently serving in the University of Agriculture, University of Engineering and Technology, Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, uh, I am going to present this paper. Uh, the title is Supervised Neural Network for Offline 4G Detection of the Handwritten Signature. My co authors uh, with this paper are uh, Samra Salim, Dr. Usman Ghani, uh, Dr. Martinez, and Enriquez for Mexico. <coughs> Uh, the agenda of my presentation uh, will follow as uh, uh, starting with the introduction. I uh, will discuss uh, with uh, some background of uh, of this work. Uh, then I will uh, move toward the motivation and aims or objectives of uh, the proposed work. Uh, on the basis of this uh, uh, work that uh, motiv motivated us to perform, I will uh, give the problem statement that we formulated uh, for the problem solving. Uh, then I will discuss uh, the research contribution and uh, the proposed approach that we use for the 4G detection. Uh, I will also discuss about uh, the data that we use for uh, the proposed uh, system evalu evaluation. Uh, then I will uh, uh, present results of our, our research and finally I will conclude uh, my work. Uh, forgery have different types uh, uh, performing, uh, contributing toward uh, multi, uh, multiple crimes, international and uh, national uh, criminals are involved in uh, these type of uh, activities. Uh, a few uh, months, uh, a few days ago, there was a huge uh, scandal here in my country that uh, a national uh, nationalized bank, uh, the accounts of this bank were uh, hacked and uh, uh, many of the customers, they lost uh, their uh, assets. Uh, so it 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 was very necessary to uh, uh, to uh, propose some sort of uh, computational solutions to solve these problems. Uh, as uh, we can see, there are uh, different uh, uh, type of uh, 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 types of uh, uh, crimes for uh, forged signatures, illegal, authorized, uh, unauthorized, or uh, uh, badly propagating uh, the signatures. First of them is uh, direct tracing that uh, the, uh, the tracing paper uh, is uh, is used to trace the signatures. Then the transmitter light is also used uh, here. Uh, the, the signatures can be forged. Also, the carbon paper is, is used to trace the signatures uh, which uh, uh, leaves a shadow of your signature and which can be used for uh, forgery type of activities. Also, uh, tracing lights and uh, tracing papers uh, are commonly used for the, uh, the forged signatures. So, uh, uh, motivation of our work is to uh, provide uh, surveillance systems. Uh, several uh, we can see from uh, uh, this slide that about uh, 0.6 million crimes per year uh, that uh, that uh, related to this uh, signature forgeries and uh, uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult for uh, the multinational national and international banks to detect uh, the forged uh, detection because there are 
uh, very similar like and uh, very small changes uh, which uh, uh, cannot be detected from um, the naked eyes or uh, the operational uh, personals who uh, remain busy in their routine activities and uh, they uh, cannot identify uh, the uh, force signatures. Uh, this uh, type of uh, activity, this type of crimes uh, motivated us to uh, to conduct such type of results that can be helpful, uh, especially to the uh, banking side, uh, so they can uh, detect forged signatures. So on the basis of these uh, motivations, we uh, establish our uh, aims and objectives. That is uh, the first uh, objective of the, our work is to increase uh, the robustness of signature for sheet detection technologies uh, with minimum efficient time because uh, the customers uh, uh, want to uh, to uh, exercise their uh, transactions immediately uh, and uh, with the less time uh, they want to perform their transaction. Uh, so uh, the second objective is to combine signature verification with 4G detection techniques. And uh, the, the next is to optimize the layer architecture in deep uh, convolutional network to perform specific tasks by optimal learning parameters. To offline authenticate signature, uh, uh, especially uh, when uh, the system is uh, not available, then uh, the system and the, the proposed work will uh, help to uh, detect the four signatures. Uh, see, uh, likewise, the optimized layer architecture is, the, is uh, also the main objectives of our work. And uh, to improve the accuracy, optimizing the learning performance of our uh, neural network architectures and uh, minimize layer arch architecture correct. We cannot hear you, Professor Mohammed. Sorry, Dr. Mohammed, we cannot hear you. So apparently we we have we have lost the connection yes. with Professor Muhammad. So we lose the connection with Professor Aslam because we are far away.
Okay. He is uh, Dr. Muhammad Lam is here already. Uh, okay. Again. Uh, uh, it seems to me that he lost the connection again. Yeah. Dr. Ana Maria Simra Salim. Can you hear me? Hello, yes, sir. I can hear you. Uh, I am trying to reach uh, Dr. Aslan. And okay. I'll update you in a while. Dr. Muhammad Aslam is already in the session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So please continue with your presentation. Dr. Muhammad, can you hear me? You have, you uh, can have, you see my second? Yes, yes, we we can see your slides. Okay. 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 So okay, please thank continue. You. Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, so on the basis of this uh, motivation and the uh, the uh, we uh, uh, establish our scope to generate a signature for uh, 4G detection system for reducing the crimes, especially in uh, developing and under underdeveloping. Uh, nations uh, like uh, in Pakistan and Asian countries and uh, to generate original and fake signature uh, data set on the basis of uh, which uh, uh, the first activity uh, the first uh, scope of our work is to uh, uh, collect the original uh, signatures and uh, we also uh, collect the uh, fake signatures on the basis of which we identify, uh, compare with the original signatures and identify uh, the uh, fake signatures. Uh, so uh, we have our problem, uh, problem statement. A recognition system is to be uh, proposed, uh, includes fingerprints, palms, and handwritten signatures verification to authentic authenticate uniquely an individual in, in legal and financial contacts uh, like credit cards and bank transactions. Uh, anyone uh, has uh, uh, his or her own signature for identification at the document level, but she can also sign forged uh, due to signature in suscept uh, susceptible of very day by day with the possible to be completely different and it should be also considered genuine. Uh, for instance, in my country, uh, there is uh, no signature verification systems in many uh, nationalized and uh, nationalized banks that can cater the need using current uh, research methodologies. Only uh, there was uh, manual uh, systems. Uh, uh, the, the, the clients, the bank clients, they uh, sign the signature cards and these cards are scanned and they are saved in the system. So the cash counter when someone uh, comes for the uh, for the cash withdrawal, uh, there was there is a manual uh, comparison uh, with the with the signatures. So uh, it becomes very difficult for uh, the manual uh, 
comparison because a slight change uh, cannot be identified with the naked eye. So there is a need to devise a framework which can propose signature verification to reduce crime at uh, that. That uh, on the basis uh, we have uh, proposed uh, our system. Uh, the overall uh, framework can be uh, we can uh, uh, divide into uh, these uh, phases. Uh, the first one is input uh, input uh, signature image that can be uh, the original or the uh, fake signatures and then the feature extraction uh, technique CNN is used to uh, extract the feature from the uh, signatures and then uh, the image uh, validation and verification classifiers that can classify uh, the signatures and then finally uh, the systems will identify either the signature is genuine or uh, original or it is forced one uh, to uh, to uh, clarify uh, the transactions uh, should be performed or not. Uh, these are uh, the pictorial uh, view of our systems. Uh, as you see that uh, the handwritten signatures either on the check or any other uh, legal document, the signature is uh, obtained and then it is uh, passed to uh, the convolutional, convolutional network layer one and uh, many other uh, layers that are interconnected with each other. And finally, uh, the systems identify uh, the force or the genuine uh, genuinity of the network. Uh, the system is four layer systems and uh, uh, each of layers uh, perform the uh, task to uh, to identify that uh, the for signature. Uh, these are the functions that are uh, used uh, for this uh, convolution convolution uh, max pooling uh, relu fully connected layers that uh, the formula uh, that we can see uh, on the slides. The uh, detail architecture of our system is uh, starting from the image of uh, the original or the face signatures and then uh, filters or uh, um, uh, other uh, steps that we can see max pooling and uh, 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 the finally uh, uh, the uh, the classif uh, the classifier uh, decides about uh, the originality of the uh, these uh, were the uh, data that uh, five, 55 subjects uh, out of which uh, 25 males and 30 females uh, were requested to uh, provide their original signatures uh, and also uh, the four signature e subjects had seven original and seven uh, four signatures so uh, uh, that we can see uh, the original signatures and a little bit change with uh, to perform uh, the comparison with the original and also the forged signatures. Uh, we uh, perform the comparison of three CNN for training and validation accuracy on different uh, split of data that was uh, five layer CNN, four layer CNN and three layer CNN and uh, according to this uh, uh, network architecture about five, four and three respectively CNN the accuracy that we achieved uh, in case of uh, split ratio 60 to 40 that is uh, uh, 59.73 uh, and the valid uh, training accuracy was 59.73 and the validation accuracy was 60.533 and in case of four layer uh, uh, cnn the training accuracy was 30 uh, 71.23 and validation accuracy by, uh, was 81.3 uh, three four and for three L L layer architecture that we can see uh, the accuracy was uh, uh, lower than the four and the five layer CNN. Similarly, if we uh, increase the split uh, ratio uh, 72 30 82 30, 20 then the accuracy uh, was uh, five layer or 69 point something and the validation accuracy 73 whereas in four layered uh, the accuracy is uh, uh, maximum than the five layer and the four layer and the th uh, three layer CNN. 
Uh, you can see here in case of uh, three layer CNN, we have the accuracy of 61.33 and 64.60. So uh, we get uh, the good results uh, in four layer CNN uh, in, in case of training accuracy and validation accuracy. That is uh, 71, 76 and 79. And the validation is 81, 84, uh, and 88. <clears throat> so uh, uh, finally, I conclude my work is offline signature for detection system has uh, described to identify skill for GD based on uh, writer independent approach. Uh, increase uh, robustness of a signature for the technology by state of the art techniques uh, data set generation from local community uh, we handle uh, the the real world problem and uh, uh, we involve uh, the local community to uh, provide uh, the data four layer convolution network based uh, system with uh, Adam optimizer produce 83.39 of significant uh, accuracy. The proposed model classify four signature from uh, genuine ones. Authorized uh, high security system for legal uh, contract is implemented for an automatic authentication. Uh, the CNN approach is invariable to scaling, uh, geometry, translation, and rotation. The exper experimentation with multiple CNN architecture for 4G detection shows that fewer uh, filter and uh, layers are enough to provide uh, the good performance. That is uh, uh, the future work of our uh, our proposed methodologies to enhance uh, uh, and acquire more uh, more data and perform more experimentation with uh, with the. Uh, with the data uh, and to increase uh, the training accuracy and the validation accuracy. Uh, these are the references that uh, we use uh, to uh, in the proposed work. Uh, thank you very much. OK, thank you, Professor Aslam. Uh, is there any question? You can raise your hand. You can write some. Uh, question on the chat. Professor Adlam, this is a, a very hot topic and now in, in this situation of the pandemic because we are using a lot the signature of the digital signature of many documents like PDFs. So um, uh, 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 my question is how uh, is affected the, affected the technique because of the image quality of what kind of formats uh, how the the image quality can affect the the algorithms yeah yeah of course uh, uh, the image quality uh, has very important role uh, for the uh, we know uh, we uh, use uh, two uh, uh, rather three forms, uh, three type of the the images uh, like uh, JPG and uh, uh, GIF formats, and then yeah. uh, we also plan to use some other formats so that uh, to give more uh, convenience and independent to the organization so that whatever they format they use, our systems uh, get the more accuracy both at testing level and training level. OK, because in, in practice, when I use one of my signatures and take some uh, picture or or make the scanning of the image, uh, the quality is different. It's quite different. And yeah, if yeah. I take. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, you are right. You are and right. if you I take right. my a copy of my signature from the PDF is uh, even worse, the image. So we have yeah. different versions uh, of the image. Okay, yeah, you're right. You are right. And another question is related with uh, if this uh, neural network techniques, uh, uh, how they are compared with the fuzzy modeling? Because uh, apparently, is is the other technique uh, which uh, is being using for this uh, for this uh, problem? Yeah. Yeah, of course we consider this, and uh, we plan to uh, extend our work uh, on the. On, on the technique that you are talking about. We will we have the plan to work with in the future. OK. Sorry, Sarah, you hear me? 
Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. I would like to hear something about the techniques. Uh, actually, the uh, question arises that uh, why do why did we choose the three, four, and uh, five layer network here? Uh, there's there okay. is actually a, a, a practical theory behind this because uh, uh, we experimented. Our experiment actually started with the standard network, which is the 1916, and uh, then Alex. Uh, all of us know these are the simplest CNN networks, and uh, uh, compare and have uh, fewer layers uh, compared to the depth, depth networks like ResNet and other ones. So, in our initial experiments, we noticed that the Alex net was performing better than the rest of the architectures. Uh, so, what was noticing uh, in that we have an optimized uh, network with the fewer layers that was performing better than 19 or 16 years. So this uh, led us towards other architectures as well. Like we experimented with a, a fewer layers, like there isn't any standard network with five, four or three layers, but these were the result of experiment and we could not elaborate all of these uh, due, to the, due to the limitation of the content. So that was the reason behind choosing this uh, technique of fewer layers as during the collection of data set we also restricted to collect simpler uh, uh, signatures as well uh, because uh, you know as it is totally image based technique uh, so uh, we uh, and a supervised technique uh, as well because uh, uh, you know uh, it's uh, there are not any defined set of features for a signature uh, as in case of other uh, image problems so uh, okay. that's about the technique here. okay thank you a final question uh, is why your validation results are better using four layers than than using five layers? Is that related with the uh, computation aspects or or why? Uh, no, what uh, what I saw in the visualization, the fifth layer was actually losing most of the information, and the information left after the fifth layer was not sufficient to uh, describe the. Uh, uh, to uh, to, uh, to divide it into a class of post or uh, genuine signature. So most of the information was being lost in that layer. So what I noticed there was the fourth layer was the best practice layer to make a decision uh, for the classifier. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other thank question you. from the audience? No, and if not, we think to the presenters and your effort, uh, we acknowledge your 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 effort to to present your paper, and in I'm thank including you. Thank the you very much. technical thank you very much. The, the technical problems uh, and distance and internet and so on. So many thanks <laughs> thank for you your much. presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we will continue with the, we, we still have some pending paper to be presented by Giovanni Palomino, but uh, it's not ready yet. Uh, Samuel, we already know something about Giovanni? Uh, um, no, uh, neither Giovanni Palomino Roldan uh, or Ernesto Suaste Gomez are in the session yet. Okay. I'm trying to, to, to call him, but uh, neither of them uh, respond. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will wait only. Mm, okay. I'm also calling. Well, I think we, we we have to stop the session because we don't have any information about uh, the last paper. So uh, 
we can stop the session and we thank you to everyone to to be here in, in this uh, multidisciplinary session and and we acknowledge the effort of professor ramakrishna and professor mohammad lam some some sumra salim dr ana maria for presenting uh, your papers thank you very much for your presentations thank you thank, thank, you. thank you now we, we can close this session because we don't know we don't have information from the final paper. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we will stop now, Samuel.